Welcome back. In our last segment, Sonny Flynn, the owner of the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center, and I were discussing the work that they do for the animals here on the Sun Coast. Now I'd like to take a minute to discuss their upcoming Cajun Occasion event scheduled for February 10th of 2023 and talk a little bit about my visit with Sunny and her critters. So, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, our news director and I went up and took a little visit because I wanted to see actually what you did and where you did it. And you introduced me to some of your your friends, um, and could you tell our viewers a little bit about your your lemurs? Yes, please. So I have a um, I have two lemurs that are on the critically endangered species list. Mm -hmm. uh, Wicket, who is my black and white rough, who is a year and a half sweet boy. Is that the I I held? Yeah, you held right. You held yeah. Wicket. Yeah, Wicket. Um, and then so Chewy, cute. our little red rough uh, lemur, she's six months old. Okay. So yeah. And then I also had the opportunity to pet a sloth whose you, name is? His name is Flash. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I was just like so in love with him and, and oh, I had the best time. And then the highlight was? You're kissing an alligator. I kissed an alligator. <laughs> and who was that? <laughs> I believe you kissed Batman, but... <laughs> okay, you know, if I kiss somebody, I should at least remember their name. <laughs> Anyways, it was just the most wonderful, the wonderful day, and I highly recommend uh, that our viewers go up there and, and have experiences uh, about all of the rescues that you've done. Because what, what you were saying before we came back on the air was all of these endangered exotic animals were pets at one time, so they've had human interaction. So it's nice that your staff is teaching um, the next generation about handling them. We definitely want to focus on the education portion of it. And mm -hmm. yes, these were pet surrenders that have had human interaction since they were born. Right. So it's so critical to understand that we're not just taking animals out of the wild right. to teach this. We are, they are legitimate rescues that people can no longer take care of for whatever reason. For that whatever reason, yep. Yeah. And the nice thing that, that, that um, you know, we talked about earlier was you have an off-site location, uh, which you're, you're working on funding right now, because the animals that are in the Discovery Center don't live there full time. Could you tell our viewers more how that works, Sunny? So um, we have all the ones that need sunlight, we have now built them habitats out at our property so they can go out and be rotated. So Rudolph is getting sun for a week and then Milo is taking his place. Milo then goes out for a week and then... And who are they? These are my tortoises. Okay, the your African, tortoises. The African okay, Solcuttas. Right. Okay. Um, the iguanas need sunlight. And there are the black, our black-throated monitor needs sunlight. So we have places where he can go out for a day, take the day off, and that's what we, we put in a sign that says, <laughs> I needed a break. Um, wow. I have a day off today. Mm -hmm. um, and we take them out and get them the proper sunlight required for nutrition okay. reasons. So. so people have to go and experience this. Let's, let's talk about, so your future plans are building an area on the property that you just acquired. And how is that going to be funded, Sunny? So we are building that. Um, as all of you know, we just went through a major hurricane and we had to evacuate 250 animals in three hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, that was an undertaking. Uh, thank God I have the team I have. But um, So we're building um, a Noah's Ark out there so that all of the animals can go. It is in a non-flood zone, non-hurricane area mm -hmm. at high elevation um so we're building noah's ark so we can evacuate them properly oh to the, so uh, they'll have okay. a, a home if we ever have to do this again uh, okay. we'll be even more prepared um, we are um, funded through donations or admissions come on in and and, and help us out that way your mm -hmm. encounters go back to the animals and their keepers uh, i am not in this to get rich uh, i care about the animals and the people that are learning sure. um, we have a special event coming up. It's called the Cajun Occasion. Yes. It's February 10th. It will be at the Billmar Beach Resort in Treasure Island. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, we are starting it out early at 5.30 so we can do a toast with everyone that's there on the beach celebrating the life of, the new, of all the animals that we have and what we're building. 
and even more so giving back to the community. Okay. Um, it is a low country boil, so it's all seafood. Okay. Um, I am from the Panhandle, and I just love the way that it's a family style, throw it out there, let's grab it and go. I love it. We will I have New Orleans style jazz band, DJ, silent auction, and lots of fun and games for all ages. All ages. Okay. So. so where can our viewers go to find out more about that, Sunny? Um, it is on our website, uh, kissagator.com, and um, also uh, johnspassrescue.com. Okay. And when you were saying uh, you, you do this for the love of the animals, I also wanted to share with our viewers, you have four other businesses which, which you started to support your nonprofit, one of which is a trolley. That's correct. For how does that help our environment as well? So um, public transportation is not utilized as much as it should be. Right. Um, during COVID, uh, the bridge, the drawbridge, we're surrounded uh, by two drawbridges, would be not be able to open because of the amount of people were, that were trying to get to the beach. So we had cars sitting right. on there. So I created the trolley company to lessen the cars on the road, which one that fits 30 people yep. versus 15 that fit two people, three sure, people. Sure, exactly. So it eliminates the okay. emissions and all that. So not to mention gas is expensive now. Leave your car. You're on no. vacation. Yes. <laughs> Leave yes. your car at the hotel. Don't drive. Exactly. <laughs> but this is it. I mean, you're, you are one of the most humble people that I've ever met, and you do it all for your animals. Yeah. And uh, you work very hard. So thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Thank it's you. been a pleasure knowing you. It, the conversations that we've had in the last three meetings, it, it mm -hmm. has just been heartfelt. And thanks. And I know you give back and you care so yeah. it's easy for me to, to well I love animals and um, I can't do what you do but I I can donate money and I hope that our viewers uh, will also be able to do that and help you out thank you thank you Again, for having so me. much we hope you enjoyed the show today and thank you for joining us on Suncoast FYI if you would like to promote your nonprofit or community event, we would love to hear from you, and this is a complimentary service. Please call our producer, Adam Huntley, at 941-361-4645 or email fyi at snntv.com. To view previous episodes, go to snntv.com and click on the What's On tab. I'm Nancy O'Neill, and I'll see you next week on Suncoast FYI. Welcome to Suncoast FYI. I'm your host, Nancy O'Neill, and today I'm joined by Aliyah Garrett from the Sarasota County Government to discuss their Sustainability Communities Workshop, and Sunny Flynn from the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center for a special two-part interview, right here on Suncoast FYI. <music> For 17 years, the Sarasota County government has worked to bring its residents information to help build lasting, equitable communities through their annual sustainabilities workshop. Here with me now is Aliyah Garrett, the Sarasota County Sustainability Outreach Coordinator, to discuss the details of this important event. 
Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for getting here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not that early, so we yeah. don't want people to think we got my get coffee. Up and stuff. Yes, <laughs> got your coffee. That's important. So, Aliyah, can you please tell me and our viewers more about your upcoming sustainability community workshop? What, yes. what is involved in that? So, Sarasota County has had a long standing commitment to sustainability. We were actually one of the first sustainability offices in Florida back in 2002 and one of the first in the nation. So we use this workshop as an opportunity to gather the community to learn about the environmental, social, um, and monetary impacts of sustainability and what we can do in our own community mm -hmm. to make those changes. Okay, so the, the workshop this year, where when and where is that taking place, Aaliyah? So it's gonna be a hybrid workshop. We wanna give people the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. So you can join online uh, using Zoom or you can meet us in person at the New College of Florida Harry Sudikoff Center. It's gonna be from 8.30 to 4 p.m. Um, and we also have a post-workshop happy hour that one of our sponsors um, is hosting for us at College Hall. We'll just walk right over there and that's free. So everybody can join us there. It's a great chance to network and meet business leaders and nonprofits, foundations, community members. It really is um, a great community event that involves everyone. Okay, and what, what, what is the date? You gave us the times, so what's the date? Yes, so it's November 1st, uh, which is next Tuesday. It's mm -hmm. coming up quick. It is, absolutely, yes. absolutely. So every year you pick different themes and topics. So what will this year's theme um, be? So this year's theme is advancing climate solutions. We always want our workshop to be very positive and uplifting and talk mm -hmm. about solutions oriented things. Um, it can get really doom and gloom with chi climate change very quickly. Sure. Um, so we definitely want to be positive. And some of the topics this year, we're going to focus on energy and also climate change and resilience. We have a food panel. So there's three different panels uh, that we'll be covering and all of the topics are related to solutions. So we'll be talking about um, energy efficiency, renewable energy, the new Inflation Reduction Act. We're going to talk about sustainable agriculture, some of our community gardens, um, and then we'll talk about in the afternoon climate and heat and some resilience efforts as well. So it, you're going to have speakers that are going to address these. So will they be explaining, like you're saying, you know, um, efficiency for our, our homes? Yes. How to be more efficient? Are they going to give specific examples of ways that we can do that. Yes, we always want to give the attendees actionable items that they can take home and make those differences. So in our energy efficiency panel, for example, we'll talk about faucet aerators, low flow shower heads, LED light bulbs, that sort of thing, rope cock and foam tape, weatherization. So low cost things that people can do to improve their indoor residential energy efficiency. And that's it, because a lot of people can't afford to put necessarily solar panels on their house. Yes. But they can do things like the light bulbs, because obviously all our light bulbs burn out, so maybe just make a little bit more of an investment when you have to do something like that. Now. It's 8.30 to 4.30. To 4. To 4. Mm -hmm. Are the speakers going to be doing different breakout sessions? So what if somebody wants to, to take in all of the workshops? Is that possible, I guess, is what I'm getting at? Yes, absolutely. So in previous years, we had different panels and breakout sessions running concurrently. But this year, we decided not to do that. Um, so everybody can join in the whole day. And the sessions will also be recorded. So if anybody has to pop out or miss a part, it will be put up on our YouTube page after the workshop. Okay. Um, and we have great keynote speakers as well. I don't want anybody to miss those. We have Julie Henry. I don't know if you know her. She's local. She mm -hmm. used to work at Moat, um, and she wrote a book called Wisdom of the Wild. Mm -hmm. So she'll be talking about leadership lessons that we can learn from the animal kingdom. I'm super excited to hear from her. She's really engaging oh, and just contagious and fun to be around. That's great. Yeah, and then our second keynote in the afternoon, her name is Sophia Kiani. And she is just phenomenal. She's an Iranian-American born citizen. Mm -hmm. And she went back to Iran to visit her family when she was like 17. And she said, oh, I want to go to school for climate change. And they said, what is that? And wow. she went on the United Nations website and is like, oh, I'll show you all these important climate documents. Mm -hmm. And she realized that they weren't in her native language. They were only in like a few major languages at the time. 
Um, so at 19, she ended up creating a nonprofit called Climate Cardinals. That's and awesome. yeah, she's translated documents into over, I think, like 40 languages. She has volunteers all over the world. And That's now amazing. she's on the United Nations um, youth panel. Awesome. And yeah. who's, your, who's your final, your third So we just have two, two because okay. we did want to um, allow more time for networking and breaks okay. throughout the day. This is the first time we're getting back in person Great. since the pandemic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, ending a little bit early. So what, why, why is it important for people to join? You know, it's really important for our community to come together. We can't make a sustainable community without everybody on board exactly. and being on the same page. Yeah. Um, so we really hope we'll have students, residents, businesses, everybody is welcome and we really encourage everyone to come. And that's it again, you know, stressing that there are large things that we can do, but small things again. What are they? What, what, what can we do today in our homes? So I do want to say we have energy efficiency classes mm -hmm. um, that we teach that are completely free. They're webinars or in person. Okay. And people can actually take home a sustainability energy efficiency kit. And it includes low flow shower heads, faucet aerators, rope cock foam tape. Um, so it's about an hour long and then people can take those home. And they're also low cost. So anybody who doesn't take our classes um, can just go to any store and pick up those items as okay. well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, where can our viewers go to find out all of the information again? So you're going to go to scgov.net forward slash sustainable communities. And you can always call our number 941-861-5000 to learn more. And the event takes place again on? Tuesday, November 1st. And it's from 830 to 4 at New College of Florida and online. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I so appreciate what you're doing for us. Thank you for having me. This has been great. Good. Looking forward to seeing everybody there. Thanks. Dear. Coming up, I'm joined by Sunny Flynn from the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center, so please stay tuned. Sunny Flynn is the owner and founder of the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center, and she's here with me now to discuss all the amazing work they do for the wildlife on the Sun Coast. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure meeting you a couple months ago and we got to chatting about what you do and I, I can't tell you how impressed I was and how humble you are about everything you do and I wanted to share that with our viewers. So let's start with telling them about the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center's mission, please. Well, thank you for having me of and course. thank you for uh, believing in me. Um, so the Alligator and Wildlife Discovery Center is a educational conservation uh, supported pet surrender res rescue. Okay. Um, we take in 95% of our animals are, are rescues or pet surrenders of the exotic kind. So alligators, crocodiles, tortoises, turtles, scorpions, you name it, um, anything that would be. Squirrels, you have squirrels. We have, we have squirrels. squirrels, we have rats and chinchillas, yeah. uh, snakes. So the exotic pet surrenders. The um, only thing that I won't take in uh, is cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. and. Because there's other people. There's that other will people do that. that have more knowledge and more time to take care of those animals. Okay. Um, we're just passionate about the the reptiles that get neglected, or you know, mm -hmm. um, or just if you think about it, you take your 12 year old to uh, the pet store, you get him a bearded dragon. What are you going to do with it when he goes to college? Now, at 19? bearded dragon for people who don't know what a bearded dragon is. A bearded dragon is a reptile. It's okay. a lizard from Australia. Okay. So <laughs> now, now, in addition to, like you said, taking all of these exotic animals in, you had told me uh, you have you have like seven different licenses because not just everybody can take in exotic pets. No, you're required. Um, well, I'm required to have uh, hours for alligator and crocodile handling. So those are class one and class two with F Florida wildlife conservation efforts. Mm -hmm. I also have my class three for uh, display for some of the lizards. And um, I have my agricultural license for my tarantulas, scorpions, and other insects. Uh, <laughs> centipedes, millipedes. Mm -hmm. um, my USDA permits for my mammals, so I have class one and class two for those as well. And oddly enough, I'm required to have a fishing license to display frogs. 
And the frogs, they, they fascinated me but because we talked about that they're, they're supposedly poisonous, but you told me that in and of themselves they're not poisonous, it's the food they eat? So uh, I have poison dart fro frog display, okay. um, several different um, breeds of them. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, poison dart frogs are poisonous out in the wild right. uh, because of what they eat. They're uh, generally fire ant eaters, mm -hmm. um, which makes a toxin that excretes out their skin, which sure. makes them poisonous. Uh, in our center, we feed them fruit flies and crickets, so they're not getting the, the creating the venom that they would. Okay, so we, we have that. Now, uh, when we were there, there was a young man sitting on the floor with one of your staff, and I know that you have 22 staff people helping you that are as passionate as you are, but when somebody goes to the Discovery Center, I was just, I was just so taken aback by the fact that your staff person was sitting on the floor with this young boy, probably six or seven, with a tarantula, and explaining to him all of the different things about a tarantula. And this little boy was so engrossed. It was, it was just heartwarming to see that what you do translates into something as a, as a learning opportunity as well. So I'm sorry, I just, I just love what you do so much. Um, how did you start taking in rescues, exotic rescues, Sunny? Um, it started out just as an alligator attraction. So mm -hmm. previous owner, um, Bob Barrett, started it. He just wanted alligators because when you come to Florida, all you want to see are dolphins and alligators. Yep. So, so he started out as a, a little side uh, attraction, which mm -hmm. isn't a bad thing. Right. Um, he hired me, and I said, you know, we could actually educate people on, on these animals. Mm -hmm. And we took in our first rescue. Um, I had someone come in uh, and ask if we would be willing to take uh, Rudolph, our 31-year-old, our soon-to-be 31-year-old African sulcata tortoise. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he is now 100 pounds. He wow. started out at 60. Wow. Uh, they're the third largest tortoise in the world. So that started me on my kick to rescuing the exotics. Uh, he was my first. Okay. And because we're, we have so much to talk about, I want to get to a couple other things. Um, what are your future plans and how are you funded, Sunny? So we are. Um, my staff jokes with me all the time or I joke with them and said if we have wall space we have animal space mm -hmm. because a lot of our animals are small so we have a little over 250 animals in in the center right now mm -hmm. um, but we're going to grow I just acquired two acres of land and Wonderful. we are going to expand that um, we're an amnesty rescue like I said we're finding more and more farm animals being brought in goats and pigs and chickens and roosters so wow. we are developing a farm um, and it's going to be our agricultural education where we'll have our wildlife in John's Pass we'll have our agricultural ed education center in Clearwater awesome. so it will be uh, it will grow even okay. bigger all so. right so when we come back we're going to tell our viewers uh, uh, where you are and and how they can help you and you have a special event coming up so thank you and um, be right back. Up next on Suncoast FYI, Sunny and I continue to discuss the Discovery Center and how we can help them continue their amazing work. So don't go anywhere. <music> 